Hello my friends, in this video we will be exploring the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a Bantu individual from the Congo. Uh, this is a male, his mitochondrial lineage is L1 and his Y DNA is E1B1A. A very widespread um, paternal, lineage is paternal lineage for Africa. Uh, in terms of the time period when this person lived, it looks like he lived basically in the common in the common period, 16th to 19th century. So this is pretty much a modern Bantu from the Congo. Uh, what he scores with Eurogenesis 36 is this: he essentially scores 73% West African, a little bit of the pygmy component, which tends to peak in pygmies and South African hunter gatherers. One thing I know about Bantus, and this is what really sets them apart from the other West Africans, is they have a little bit of this pygmy-like or uh, South African-like admixture, which really sets them apart from the rest of West Africans. So I wonder if this is what I'm seeing here with this individual scoring 11% pygmy and 8% East African. Uh, it's also very interesting that he's scoring 2.25% Siberian. I wonder why that is. And if we look at the ethnic calculator results with my own ethnicity calculator, you can see here he is closest to Hoi Sun Hunter Gatherer, followed by Shum Laka, uh, which is all sort of in the ballpark, followed by Mota Ethiopian Hunter Gatherer. And after that come the Vindija Neanderthal, South African Hunter Gatherer, Clint Chimpanzee, Oko the Gorilla, African American 2, then Shum Laka, this other individual, then African American 1. So overall, he's very similar to various sub Saharan African groups. Uh, and by the way, Vindija Neanderthal is another example of a coordinate that really closely matches Sub-Saharan Africans. Same goes for Clint Chimpanzee and Oko, Oko the Gorilla. They both have very Sub-Saharan African results. So these are all really Sub-Saharan African groups that this individual is scoring. Uh, one thing that's kind of very interesting if you look at the Oracle is that the closest model is Filipino plus Neanderthal co from Cotas. And one thing that's really cool about this Neanderthal from Cotas is that this individual is kind of like an extreme Sub-Saharan African. Like there is a, the Sub-Saharan African specific drift is so strong in this Neanderthal from Cotas that he's actually more Sub-Saharan African than actual Sub-Saharan Africans. At least that's the way my calculator works. So when you see, it's very normal and it's very like typical to see Sub-Saharan Africans getting modeled as a mixture of East Asian or European plus Neanderthal from Cotas. It's actually quite normal because this this specific Neanderthal has a lot of Sub-Saharan African specific drift. In fact, more in fact more Sub-Saharan African specific drift than actual black people, which is really, really crazy. So that's why you see this in the Oracle. Followed by that, second second place is Vindija Neanderthal plus Hoi San Hunter Gatherer. Once again, Vindija Neanderthal is also very Sub-Saharan African in its uh, in the way it scores, it is not as extremely Sub-Saharan African as Neanderthal from Cotas, though. Not as extremely. And Vindija Neanderthal actually has some affinities to um, East Asians as well, which is kind of interesting. It's very interesting. You can, uh, If you want to explore that, there is this, this coordinates in the source. You can copy them, you can put them into a Hadou, and you can do some exploring, see how all of these groups really uh, match up against each other. But that's what I can tell you for uh, for these samples with my FTC calculator. Now let's go ahead and look at the Nashakot results and see what this person looks like. So it looks like this individual has got darkest brown eyes, definitely very dark eye color. It looks like he's got black hair, once again, definitely very dark hair color. And it looks like he's got dark brown skin, once again, definitely very dark skin color. For hair texture, it looks like most likely he's got kinky hair. At 46% likelihood, there is a slight likelihood of, I mean, not really, because keep in mind, this is also not a very high quality file. When you have really high quality files, you will see, uh, you will see more precise results for the hair texture. And it looks like he does not have blue eye haplotype 3 or blue eye haplotype 1. He does not really have any of, any of the blue eye haplotypes. Um, he has some variations for light pigmentation, like this here or this in IRF4. But for the most part, it's a very dark color individual. Wait a second. No, 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 no. Wait a second. That's crazy. Okay. 
this is crazy. So he actually has one of the light color variants in MC1R. That's really ridiculous. That's insane. So he actually has one variant for ginger hair in MC1R. Really, really unusual. I was not expecting to see this. I, I promise, guys, I when I make these videos, I record my initial reaction. I don't prepare this beforehand. So I'm like flabbergasted seeing this in the result. Um, all right, now let's go ahead and see what he scores for the biomarkers. And then we're going to look at the polygenic risk scores. So for the biomarkers, it looks like nothing relevant was found for vitamin D levels. It looks like he's got slightly below average level of LDL cholesterol, slightly above average level of HDL cholesterol. Definitely very healthy. This is all really good to see. Uh, nothing re relevant was found for glucose and slightly above average level of hemoglobin. Okay, and uh, pretty much typical or average blood pressure. Okay, that's that's good. Pretty much typical or average level of iron in the blood. Or maybe nothing relevant was found here. I'm not sure. For SHBG, it looks like he's got slightly above average levels of SHBG. Once again, that's really good. You want, you really want to have a little bit higher levels of SHBG. Typically, higher is better uh, unless you, unless you have way too much. So the it's easier, it's better to have slightly higher than slightly lower levels of SHBG in general. Um, now let's go ahead and look at the polygenic risk scores. And it looks like he's got a slightly below average score for vitiligo, a slightly above average score for myopia, slightly above average score for primary biliary cirrhosis, slightly above average score for stroke, a slightly above average score for male pattern hair loss, which is kind of weird because um, typically sub-Saharan Africans will, will score lower for this. It looks like he's got a pretty much spot on average score for atrial fibrillation. Nothing relevant was found for DVT. It looks like he's got higher than average odds for bipolar type 1 and also higher than average odds for schizophrenia, which is quite typical for uh, sub-Saharan Africans to score higher for both of these both of these um, illnesses. For type 2 diabetes, it looks like he's got pretty much spot on average odds for type 2 diabetes and slightly below average odds for Alzheimer's. It looks like nothing relevant was found for multiple sclerosis, but what, from what we know about sub-Saharan Africans, you can expect the risk ratio for multiple sclerosis to be very low. Uh, for cancer section, looks like there is no risk variance for breast cancer and no risk variance for testicular cancer. Definitely very good. For celiac disease, zero risk variance for celiac disease. Very good. GSS, nothing relevant was found. Uh, for Crohn's disease, two risk variance out of 14. Pretty good. For Raffenstein's, nothing relevant was found. And for Parkinson's, two risk variance out of four. Unfortunately, it's not a very high quality result, so we can't really discuss much in this result um so overall this looks like a very healthy individual i don't see anything concerning in this, in this result whatsoever let's go ahead and look for the um for the monogenic stuff so it looks like he's actually intermediate in the comets valmet variation meaning he's got valmet genotype uh intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake and intermediate dopamine levels it's definitely unusual to see the met allele in a sub-saharan african so he's got one warrior and one warrior allele in comt uh, once again, the warrior allele is kind of uncommon for sub-Saharan Africans, but it does occur in their population at a certain at a certain frequency. So I guess it's not that unusual. Uh, it looks like he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. It looks like he has two variants for higher levels of empathy in OXTR. Definitely very typical for sub-Saharan Africans to have higher levels of empathy, uh, at least based on their genotype in OXTR. And it looks like he... We're going to skip all that. I don't really know how to cover this, to be honest with you. Um, he's got this genotype, which corresponds to larger nose size, and this genotype, which corresponds to slightly thinner eyebrows. Uh, he does not have East Asian genotype in EDAR. All right, pretty typical. No micropenis. Once again, uh, you might want to know that a little bit more. Uh, what's interesting, he's got better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Definitely very cool. Um, I think Sub-Saharan Africans tend to score that most commonly. It looks like he does not have full sneeze reflex and he does not have any variance for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. Um, he's not a carrier for cutaneous albinism type 1B mutation, so he's not albino. Uh, when it comes to testosterone panel, it looks like he's got some genotypes that lower the levels of bioavailable testosterone. Okay, very interesting. He has got two genotypes, actually, that lower the levels of testosterone. Very interesting. Um, 
He's got this gene type which slightly increases the odds of leukemia. It looks like there's just not much. There's just not much to talk about here when it comes to the result. Uh, most of the really important, relevant stuff is not in the file, so I have to make, I have to generate content talking about something that's unfortunately not in the file. Um, okay, for for color blindness, nothing was found. For FTO gene panel, it looks like he's got some genotypes that increased the odds of obesity, which is definitely very interesting. Uh, so he might actually have a little bit of a predisposition to being over overweight. Um, for bio traits panel, he's got two copies of the hunter gatherer CLTCL1 gene variant, which basically corresponds to reduced ability to process carbs and sugars. It does not really have anything to do with being a hunter gatherer or a farmer. Uh, it's just that it was named this way because apparently the biologists who named this variant thought that reduced ability to process carbs and sugars would be beneficial to somebody living a hunter gatherer lifestyle. It does not really have anything to do with hunter what hunter gatherer ancestry or anything like that so don't worry about it too much uh, i have the same genotype here actually as this individual i also have two copies of the hunter gatherer clt co1 gene variant um it looks like he's also more likely to be able to detect floral fragrance definitely very interesting and for the blood type it looks like his blood type is type a wow that's cool so his blood type is type a that's kind of uncommon you don't typically see type a blood type Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay. Okay, so that's that's what we know about this sample. Um, thanks for watching, I guess, until the very end. Um, maybe I should show the phenotype. Did I show that? No, I didn't show it. So let's show the phenotype oracle real quick uh, because people might want to see what uh, phenotypes my trait predictor comes up for this individual. So the closest phenotype is this, followed by this, followed by uh, this. Here's the models. Um, the two-way models for the phenotypes. And after that, we have the facial morphology oracle, which is kind of like a... Um, you remember my eye shape predictor tool? That's basically what it is. It's just slightly different, but it's it's essentially based on that. Uh, so the so this, him scoring 51% of this, that's essentially a sub-Saharan African facial morphology profile. This is what I assumed sub-Saharan Africans typically look like. Maybe I wasn't exactly correct. I don't know. That's just how I view these peoples. Uh, this is supposed to be a, a Native American facial morphology. This right here is supposed to be East Asian. Just from I was making these morphs, okay, and uh, I was taking my own artistic um, artistic endeavors. So if if you disagree with me, you know, if you think that these pictures don't exactly represent these ethnicities, of course you're free to do so. Uh, I think I did a good job. This right here is supposed to be Northeast European. This right here is supposed to be Middle Eastern. This right here is supposed to be Northwest European. This right here was supposed to be South Asian. And this right here was supposed to be Australian Aboriginal. So if you disagree with my artistic endeavors and what I chose to, uh, the pictures I chose and the pictures I morphed for these ethnicities, once again, if you disagree, um, I totally, I totally understand that. Maybe I will change that in the future. I have until May 22 to make all these changes. Uh, and on May 22, you will see all these changes on the official uh, application that's on Edge. Anyway, thanks for watching until my video, until the very end of the video. Uh, definitely leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And also, uh, I want to remind you that you can download the file, the raw DNA file in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.